Computer Programming for Kids. Step 23. Preparing for Stepping. One step at a time, you are learning real-world programming. Part of that is actually called stepping. You step through code in the debugger with a weather eye and a wary watch on just what's happening inside your code, which is not always what you think or expect is happening. Stepping through your code is not a trip to the fire swamp, though. Note, if you haven't seen the movie The Princess Bride yet, take a break now and enjoy yourself for a bit. Tell whoever is monitoring your progress in these steps that your guide, I guess that's a good enough title for me in this role, highly recommended that you do so. Or you could wait until later. But watch it anyway, sometime. Anyway, be doubly assured that this trip is no fire swamp type of experience. It is more like a walk in the park, like the one this cat is taking. And then in the newsletter, you'll see a picture of a very beautiful cat. As we step through the code, there is a method to our madness, no pun intended. That is to say, there is something specific we are looking for. There is a bug in our logic somewhere. Maybe more than one. The problem right now in our code is that when you go from answering question number 9 to the 10th and final question by clicking the next button, the question n of n label goes from question 9 of 10 to question 11 of 10. It should, of course, be question 10 of 10. Also, after 9 questions have been answered, it shows the percentage of correct answers as being 70%, which is impossible with 9 questions. It can only legitimately be 0, 11, 22, 33, 44, 56, 67, 78, 89, or 100%, not 70. So we will step through the code to see what the problem is or problems are. There may be another bug too, but fixing the first ones may solve that one also. It is this. Selecting the next CSV file from the combo box does not refresh the screen. All labels and radio button text remains the same. It should set the progress bar back to zero, the question n of n to question one of ten, the percentage back to a simple non-committal percent sign, and display the first question in the top label and the first three candidate answers in the radio buttons. As mentioned in the previous step, not all of the stuff that appears in the code listing actually runs. That is to say, not all of it can be stepped through line by line at runtime as we are debugging. For example, the variable and constant declarations, the names of the methods and event handlers, their definitions, the using clauses at the top of the file, the curly braces that enclose blocks of code, those sorts of things are not steppable. They matter, they are necessary, but you can't step through them. Nor would you want to because it would be of no value to do so. I'm going to show the code one more time, the difference being this time I will not show anything that doesn't actually run, which are the things just mentioned in the previous paragraph. And when one method calls another, the code from the called method is in place right there in line, so the true path through the code is seen. This is the path the debugger will take through the maze as we step through the code. So here's that code, and then we'll begin to step through it. And then it shows that code again in order of how it will run in a normal situation of people selecting a file and going through all the questions. Are you ready to venture forth into the maze? A picture is shown of a maze. Remember that we are specifically looking for the reason why the question N of N label goes from 9 to 9 of 10 to 11 of 10, and why 70% is displayed as a correct answer percentage after 9 questions, which is mathematically impossible. So to find that bug, or those bugs, that is to say, to determine what is causing these failures, we will step through the code by putting a breakpoint in the next button's click event, and then continue to select the F10 key to step over lines of code within that event handler, and F11 when we reach calls to other methods. 
Note, F10 steps over the line of code, after which you can see what assignment was made, if any, on the line you just stepped over. F11 will templar temporarily leave the current method and step into the method being called, from which point you can go back to using F10 to step through those lines, unless that method calls yet another method. And then you select F11 again to step into that method. It sounds more complicated than it really is, perhaps. We will take up with the process in the next step, illuminating what happens when and why. Together, we will detective out these bugs. And then in the newsletter, you would see a poster of Sherlock Holmes from over 100 years ago, 1916.